Sajad uh, Kareem is also with us this morning, the Conservative MEP for the North West. Now, I know you've actually met President Assad. What's he like? Well, on a, a personal basis, he was actually very charming. Uh, I met him in Damascus as part of an official EU delegation in his presidential palace. Uh, we had a meeting that lasted uh, almost an hour or so altogether with uh, very comprehensive discussions. He was very open. Uh, his attitude um, spelled out uh, a need for reform, a recognition of a need of uh, greater rights for his people in Syria, as he saw it, um, an opening of, of markets, reaching out to the world. Um, he said all the right things, mm. but quite clearly his intentions were quite different. Yeah, now, from, from, from what you know, from what you've seen, do, do you think that he did order this chemical attack on his own people? Based upon everything that I've seen, and certainly there was uh, a very detailed presentation of what findings we have at an EU level in uh, a foreign affairs uh, committee meeting yesterday in the European Parliament, uh, on a personal basis, uh, I don't need any further convincing that he uh, and his regime find what has actually happened here. But I completely understand the need for two things. Uh, firstly, for um, whatever intelligence there is, uh, for that to be shared on a wider basis than has currently been done. Uh, and that is something that's going to happen in the United States of America with Congress uh, later today. And secondly, for the UN inspectors to be allowed the time and space to come forward with their findings. Without these two things, I think it's very difficult for the international community to move forward on any consensual basis at all. Mm. And, and uh, so, Jed, you, you mentioned when, when you actually went to Syria to talk to the uh, president. Did you manage to, 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 to go out into the city and, and, and talk to the uh, people as well? Yes, I did. And uh, at the time that I was there, it became very clear to me that there was a real sense of, um, uh, at the very least, nervousness uh, amongst the, the ordinary people that I came across. Not many people were at all happy about engaging in conversation about uh, their leadership and their government. There was quite clearly, in terms of the NGO groups that were operating on uh, an underground basis, there was very clearly uh, a genuine desire to move towards a much more open and free society than what they currently have. Uh, and that is what has started to play out in terms of uh, the very clear civil war that's taking place there now. There is a real desire on behalf of the Syrian people to actually be masters of their own destiny and not to be kept in the way that they have been uh, to date. Having said that, I think it's absolutely imperative to recognise that there is no single Syrian opposition to which other powers can today attach themselves. Uh, and this is something that has become abundantly clear all the time. Uh, certainly at an EU level in the European Parliament, I myself tried to arrange for a, a conference to take place to get various Syrian opposition actors and groups together. Uh, but it was very clear to me that there is no single or indeed um, any uniformity of um, coming together of Syrian opposition groups, and that is a real difficulty because whatever action we, uh, if the international community decides to take action, whatever action it decides to take, um, where do we go after that action has been taken? There is nobody that we can turn to and say that these are the people who will, in effect, step in and start to forge the type of Syria that the people want. OK, uh, we'll have to leave it there. But uh, thank you very much for joining us this morning, uh, Sajad Karim, who's the Conservative MEP for the North West. Sajad Karim is a Conservative MEP for the North West, joins me this evening. Good evening to you. Good evening. And you know more about Syria than most, I would have thought, just from your experiences. Just tell us about those. Well, I've been engaged uh, at an official level uh, on behalf of the European Parliament and the European Union uh, in dealing with Syria for a number of years now. Uh, I've certainly had uh, very close contact with uh, the government uh, regime in Syria. I've met with President Assad uh, in Damascus in his presidential palace uh, and uh, had quite extensive talks. Uh, but Syria is also a very important player in the Middle East, and it certainly forms part of all of the ongoing dealings and discussions that we have with countries like Egypt, for instance, 
uh, which is also going through some uh, fairly important dynamics of its own uh, at this moment in time. So that's the level and extensiveness of uh, the engagement that I've had. It's going to be very tricky, isn't it, for uh, these governments across the world to decide what to do in this situation, because clearly the images that we saw on the front page of the newspapers are unacceptable, and I think everybody recognises that. But similarly, um, in terms of what action can be taken, uh, it's very divisive, isn't it, as to what actually uh, the world as a whole should do. Uh, where do you stand? It's a very difficult decision for anybody who's uh, involved uh, with the processes that are unfolding. It's not a clear-cut situation at all. Uh, what makes it particularly complex is the situation in countries that immediately surround Syria and indeed the region as a whole. Um, along with that, uh, the uh, further complications come from the fact that you already have a large number of people who are now refugees from Syria in neighbouring countries. I certainly have met with many of them in uh, uh, the surrounding areas that they have gone to to seek refuge. And as I speak to you, there is uh, information and reports that are coming in uh, of a likelihood of a, a huge increase in those numbers based upon uh, the fact that we are likely to see infrastructure starting to uh, come to a halt, particularly in terms of supply of electricity, etc. So these are all factors that are coming into play. So far as the actual chemical attack itself is concerned, uh, here today, of course, David Cameron has stated very clearly as Prime Minister of the United Kingdom that uh, it isn't a clear-cut case as to quite how those uh, chemical attacks have taken place. I have to say from my part, having been involved and received information in the European Parliament uh, based upon a Foreign Affairs Committee meeting that took place yesterday, uh, I am uh, convinced beyond a reasonable doubt that it was the regime of President Assad that is responsible for these uh, chemical attacks. However, having said that, I do believe it's absolutely essential that we allow for the UN uh, inspectors uh, to come forward uh, with a report uh, for the United Nations and the international community and that we then decide what action is appropriate after we have that report. And what action along do you think would be appropriate? Well, uh, uh, along with that, if I may just finish, along with that, I think it is also important that um, the intelligence that we currently have is shared between countries and indeed with the public to an extent that is appropriate. And that is something that is starting to happen both here in the UK, but in particular, it is going to happen in the United States today by way of that being shared with Congress. And so, Sorry, just going back I, to that point, what, what do you think is an appropriate course of action if it is proven by the weapons inspectors? Well, um, I uh, indeed, uh, along with several others, have been calling for quite some time now that it is in the interests of Syria and the Syrian people that President Assad should step aside. Uh, I recognise that that is not a course of action that he is minded to take. What it does allow us to do is to really turn up the pressure on countries like China and Russia that are providing him with the political coverage that he needs. I think if we have the evidence from UN inspectors that points in the direction to say that it is Assad's regime that has carried this out, then it makes it very difficult for them to continue giving him the political coverage that he needs. Whilst I recognise that Prime Minister Cameron said very clearly today that so far as the UK is concerned, this is not about forcing a regime change, I really do take the view, certainly at an EU level or an international community level, that if we do find UN inspectors coming forward to say that his regime was responsible, then even that should not be something that is off the cards.